Hi everyone, my name is Rebecca, I'm a fish biologist, an ichthyologist and also a PhD student. I specialise and study the evolution of log cards catfishes, but today I'm going to talk about wild caught fish and how to handle wild caught fish, kind of the considerations when it comes to keeping, acclimating, um, sort of the husbandry side of wild caught fish. And it's not actually that vastly different from captive red fishes or farm fishes. It really just depends on the source. So a lot of this will cross over quite a bit. So why wild caught? So what is wild caught? So generally it will be, as the name suggests, it's caught in the wild, in its natural water body, where they're found in the wild, whether it be a lake or river, or maybe a small puddle in some like killifish cases maybe, or wetlands of some kind. It's a whole diversity of different habitats. But why would you go for wild caught? So wild caught tends to have the largest amount of, well it's going to have the largest amount of genetic diversity per the individual species of fish that you're keeping. So if you want, um, if you're going for breeding fishes, it can be really useful to have that genetic diversity, whether you're keeping farmed fishes, but maybe also adding in wild caught to increase that genetic diversity. So that genetic diversity can lead to a wider di diversity of sort of health in a way. That's kind of not the, but the best uh, it can respond to changes in if there's different parasites or parameters a little bit better as a population but genetic diversity tends to be at more at that population level unless you're getting cases of inbreeding and some fishes probably have very high cases of inbreeding within captivity and just because you get uh, fishes from different suppliers or stores it doesn't mean they actually originate from different farms so that's where wild caught is kind of like an assured diversity the other aspect is you know that it won't be half well farmed in more or less a monoculture. It might not be an exact monoculture, but it's where it they'd be farmed just one species or a few species all together. And this tends to be a higher risk uh, for parasites for disease because it's got all of its target species all in one place, and therefore also it kind of farming can facilitate just farming parasites and diseases in general and that's kind of where wild caught is a little bit more dispersed but a little bit of a different argument. So the big thing about wild caught is the amount of diversity of species that you can obtain. Many freshwater fishes cannot be bred in captivity or are not bred in captivity to any extent or at all. So it means that you have a wider diversity of species that you can keep. And just because they can't be bred in captivity, it doesn't mean the fishing and the obtaining of them from the wild is unsustainable. It depends on the species. Some are much more sustainable than others. Sometimes they're taking that large amount of juveniles that would largely otherwise die in the wild, um, rather than taking breeding individuals. Because breeding individuals tend to be larger, therefore more expensive to export and therefore not so common. It's also supporting wild, uh, well, supporting people in the countries that these fishes are obtained from. There's many uh, sort of, it's a high economic, oh, it's of high economic importance to certain countries and certain regions of certain countries as to actually while catching the fish and therefore they're not going for other markets such as maybe uh, logging or anything environmentally destructive on that sort of scale. A lot of aquarium fishes is, are obtained very much at a lower level, more of an artisan fishing method rather than that sort of massive trawling that you see with uh, food fishes. It's a little bit more custom. The other aspect is uh, farmed fishes do have a lot of pollution involved, a lot of invasive species involved. There's whole other factors to uh, farming that isn't always um, mentioned because it's almost like entirely promoted. So what might you consider if you're going to import or bring in uh, wild caught fish or you're going to keep wild caught fish? So one of the big ones is going to be bycatch or mislabeled fishes, they might 
you might get a batch of what you ordered and then one that looks like different and it might be a different species. It might be that they were mislabeled by mistake or similar or they had a different common name uh, associated with them and that caused a sort of, uh, sort of like where you would have a fish that you were sure just come in so it does require a little bit more skill sometimes if you're going to correctly identify them and not all places do sometimes they might put a very common name a uh, general uh, genus name it might not be so precise but that is a big risk is the bycatch and that isn't actually always bad sometimes you could get some really rare species that are never brought into captivity on purpose uh, through, which is I think brilliant, it's really useful to have that, especially if you like anything rarer or unusual, you're going to get it more or less as bycatch only. Some like trichomitrids, um, some of the, a lot of the catfishes like lorcas, you're going to get some rare ones come through with that um, bycatch from what I've caught. The one downside that I think is a proper downside, but it's also kind of interesting, is disease diversity. So it's not like you're going to get a higher prevalence of disease. Farming definitely has maybe a higher density of a, a lower diversity of different diseases. It tends to be the same sort of ones that like uh, you probably, I guess white spot is always going to be a risk but um, certain things like gyrodactylus, uh, nematodes, uh, certain sort of worms and things like that. But when you're dealing with wild caught, it tends to be diversity of different things, so low numbers of different things. And it doesn't mean it's bad. So parasite load is kind of normal in wild animals, and therefore you're kind of going to see them, and particularly like worms. There are some really wacky ones that come through. Some you don't even need to consider or worry about, like Dermatostidium. But it does mean you kind of have to be prepared, and it's kind of... A little bit, I guess sometimes a bit of a debate whether you want to worm them or not. Should you worm or should you not? Because they will have worms, but it's just what worms, therefore what treatment. It's a little bit more of a balance. But yeah, you're going to see some really funky things and it doesn't mean it's as harmful. You're going to, there's as much like diseases in when you're monoculturing the same thing. and. No matter if you're whacking it with loads of chemicals, it doesn't mean the chemicals are actually, like, pathogens can get resistance, especially salt resistance. But realistically, there is no difference between um, wild caught and captive bred or farmed. Generally, they will be shipped from different countries in the world so you've got they're still being transported long distances there will be more local farms and there will be more local breeders but it can uh, the price can vary and also availability can vary on those so it's really there is not yeah there's just not that much difference uh, when it comes to like acclimation, I would give it the same amount of time, but considering on how long they've been shipping for. So, I just plop and drop anyway, especially if they're going to have high ammonia, therefore you're going to have, yeah, um, a high ammonia in the bag. Well, it was ammonium. And also, they might be very low in temperature. It's just better to have them out of the environment, and if you're going to be dripping them, Stuff like catfishes that can self-poison, um, you're going to get that occurring in if you're dripping and they're really stressed. When it comes to, are you going to treat? Well, if you're going to treat, farmed fish are just as bad. So treating farmed fish is just as kind of good as if you're going to treat wild caught. Um, I prefer not to treat unless I know what it is because firstly, you're kind of, it's a guess in the dark kind of thing, whether it's going to be what pathogen and whether that treatment's going to work on it. The big one though is parameters, and this kind of gets a bit confused a little bit. So, obviously, the wild parameters are probably going to be different to your tap water parameters, and but. That doesn't mean that the farmed parameters are also going to be the same as your tap water. They're likely going to be different as well. A lot of the farm fishes are bred in places around Southeast Asia, which is higher, um, well, it's going to have much higher temperatures than here, 
but also it's probably going to have softer water and quite a lot of people, so lower conductivity of water. And a lot of people are having, even for those farmed um, with belly cichlids, just because it's, yeah, just because it's farmed, it doesn't mean it's adapted to your tap water. If it's uh, kept a bed in your area, then it would be, but I think that's a whole debate on its own uh, regarding the physiology because it's not actually that simple. But wild caught doesn't mean you need to be more careful on parameters, really. It just depends on the fish. It depends on uh, whether, well, if you're breeding fishes, eggs and fry are very different. Other than that, I think that's all I've got to say about wild caught versus captive because it's not that scary. Wild caught gives you so much more diversity. There's also the ethics side of uh, genetic diversity and also if we didn't have wild caught there's so many fishes we wouldn't know about and it gives kind of a value to them in the wild which otherwise wouldn't be there for many of us so anyway i end this video here thank you for watching if you like my videos please comment like and subscribe and goodbye